good, you're here. Welcome to the Masterminding Success Podcast. They say if you want to be successful in business and in life, then surround yourself with successful people. So pull up a seat. The Mastermind is about to begin. Hey, glad you could join us for another episode of the Masterminding Success Podcast. We're your host, Keith Wheeler. And Nuria Corby. And what are we talking about today, Nuria? Today, we're going to talk about working with freelancers. And I can't say that I've had a lot of experience with freelancers, but I know that that you have. So <laughs> what's what's it like? I'd love to know. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I've I have worked with freelancers for many years um, on all all different aspects of my business. Um, in fact, I've I've been a freelancer. I was a freelancer for years on a place called Upwork. Um, and uh, so I've I kind of know from both the, the freelancer side as well as uh, the client side. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's there. I mean, there there are definitely a lot of pros and cons to both. Um, but the, the main reason why I started working with freelancers and, and again, I don't use freelancers all the time, um, but because the freelancers allow me to get back the one thing that no business owner has enough of and we can't make more of and that's time you know i can make more money i can't make more time you know and so there are just things on my to-do list that sometimes don't get to done unless i hire somebody else to do it yeah that's that makes total sense and the only reason i haven't worked with any freelancers for my current business is because I'm, I'm a bit of a control freak and I want to do everything yeah. myself and I want to, I don't want to become some kind of employer or anything like that right. because I like to keep thing, things very simple. But at the same time, I haven't got all the time in the world. Like you said, it's, it's something that I either work on the business and that encroaches on my free time. And, you know, there are, there are lots of things that I would like to do and if I got a freelancer, it might free up some time for myself. But it's also the fact that I I love doing what I do and I like learning things. So I quite like doing things myself as well. So there is a real, in my situation, there's a real conflict. I don't yeah. know whether to go for that or not, but I know that a lot of people probably would employ a freelancer, especially if they can use someone to do the things that they can't do or that they don't have the time to learn to do. So I think I will definitely start considering using freelancers because there are lots of things that I'm not that good at, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. And in those cases, I think it is better to to really hand it over to somebody else to do. But um, yeah, it's a problem, it really. <laughs> Yeah, it's I, I can see that. Um and, and I'm a I'm a bit of a control freak myself. Um, mm. you know, I, I I don't sometimes I don't know what I want, but I know what I don't want when I see it. Um and so yeah, so I, I can definitely understand that. Uh I, I feel like it, it really comes down to me, and this is when when I first started really considering using them, is um is was I running my business or is my business running me? Mm. You know, if I feel like I'm running ragged. <clears throat> And I'm, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not focusing on things that are what we call moving the needle, you know, that are actually bringing in the money. Um, what I like to outsource are things that either I'm not good at, I don't know how to do, I don't have time to do, or I just don't like to do, Yeah. you know, um, those, those are the main areas that I consider a freelancer for. Um, yeah. you know, I, I agree. I, one of the things I love the most about this business is I'm always learning something new. Um, and I think when I stop learning something, it was probably when I'll stop doing it, yeah. um, but I can, I, and I have used freelancers to accomplish that, you know, like I might not know how to, um, you know, create a, a presentation for a, an upcoming event I'm doing, let's say, mm -hmm. you know, and I don't have time to learn how to do it yet. I can hire a freelancer to do it for me. And then I can use what they've done and and kind of recreate that myself when I have time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a, a lot of the, the things that I outsource are things that are time sensitive. And, you know, it's just a matter of what do you have more of? Do you have more time yeah. to do it or do you have more money? You know, discretionary funds that you can pay someone to do it for you, 
And then again, learn, use it as a learning area for, for later. There are plenty of things that I've hired freelancers for, for one time, you know, they've done one, this one thing for me. And then after that, I know how to do it. Uh, and I don't need to hire somebody else to do it again. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, I have people who, you know, like my, my video editor, I've been using him for three or four years and he's a freelancer. Yeah, you brought up a really good point there because sometimes it's about the money as well. Not not mm -hmm. everybody can afford to have a, a video editor or anything right. like that. In my case, I think that in the past, I I wouldn't have been able to afford that either, but I could now and I still edit all my videos myself and I know I could probably do a better job. And I think there does come a time when you should leave it to the professionals. I think right. I, I think I should think about that really, just to free up some more time. But I think cost is obviously a, a, a factor in in why people maybe don't hire right. or outsource uh, their work. And um, I think that a lot of people probably have certain things that they would like to outsource. I can think of a few things like book covers, for example, mm -hmm. that's a very Absolutely. typical. Yeah. And I think that is, that is one of the um, topics where I would say it, it probably is worth outsourcing if the designer is a professional because your book covers are so important and they're so right. it's the first thing people see and if they're professionally done then that would make it so much better for right. for everyone so i think there are certain things that that lend themselves really well to be outsourced like book covers like maybe maybe even ghostwriting having a ghostwriter i don't know what else can you think of that some people could could outsource that would help um yeah. manage their time yeah uh I, the book cover <clears throat> designer was probably the very first um thing that i outsourced the very first yeah. and 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 they don't have to break the bank uh matter of fact i i use the same um book cover designer for the last i don't know five or six years and she's cost me probably between 20 and $30 um, per, per project. Mm -hmm. So nothing like 300, like, I mean, it, it'll, it's going to depend on the type of books you're doing and things like that. Yeah. You know, if you're, if you are in a super competitive niche, you know, science fiction and things like that, you might have to spend more. Um, but, you know, I mean, I, I, like I said, I've had dozens of covers done. And she she does everything from nonfiction to, you know, <laughs> comic books and all kinds of things. And so, you know, it doesn't have to break the bank. Uh, other areas that you can use uh, video ed or you can use um, freelancers for are um, like if you're if you're talking specifically about books, which I know we talk a lot about, but um, book editing, uh, you know, A plus content, you know, you, you know, you and I talk about creating A plus content. You know, maybe you don't know how to do it. Maybe you don't have the time to learn how to do it. You can hire someone to do that for you. Yeah. You can hire someone to um, to write your your book description. You know, if you don't feel like that's an area that you're well versed in. Yeah. There's, you know, <laughs> matter of fact, there's an actual there's an actual um, author shop, author store on uh, on Fiverr, for example, wow. that you can go in there and it's everything just just for authors. So it's everything from, um, like I said, writing the, you know, the ghost writing, outlining all the way through to illustrations. If you need that book covers, <laughs> um, uh, they even have stuff when it comes to, you know, running Amazon ads, like everything in between. Um, I personally, I personally wouldn't hire a freelancer um, to run my ads. Uh, that's an area that I'm very delicate about myself. Uh, and that comes you know, like you were saying before about, you know, kind of being a control freak. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's one area that I'm very controlling of, even though you absolutely can hire somebody to do that um, within the Amazon ads dashboard, you can set different um, uh, levels of access. So you can give them just access to create where they can't change anything. They can't change your budget. They can't see how much you made. So you can do all that um, within Amazon ads platform. But, um, but yeah, there's, I mean, and even things that are not book related. I mean, I've, <laughs> I've hired Fiverr people to create uh, one guy in particular, I hired him to cr create, uh, I wrote a, a little comedic song and for uh, a buddy of mine, or, you know, Dale, Dale Roberts. And, uh, 
I I paid this guy to sing the song in a sh in the shower, um, and and record it, and it was it was just a gag gift. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can you can create you know you can hire freelancers on different platforms for all different things, you know, for fun, for for work. But obviously, most of what we're talking about today is going to be specifically about the business because of you know that's the that's what we talk about in the podcast. But but yeah, I mean, there are so many different possibilities. Um, whether it's, you know, e even things like um, helping you balance your your budget, you know, um, <clears throat> social media marketing. Social media yeah. is something that a lot of people don't like doing. Yeah, you know, they 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 like doing it from a, a personal level, but not from a business aspect of it. They don't want to do it for their business. They want to do it for the personal life. You can hire freelancers to manage your social media and do posts for you, or or yeah. blog posts, or whatever. Yes, actually, my daughter, in a way, is freelancing for me because yeah. she does my social media. And you've mentioned a few things there that I actually want to outsource because I really can't do it. One of them is I want to hire an illustrator for my uh -huh. children's books. And also because I want to create a video about it for my children's book course. And then so people can see, you know, how would you even hire a freelancer right. and what is involved? And because I have not done it before for that, it would be would be quite interesting to to make a video about that as well. And the other thing that I really I probably will hire someone. I published a book, one of my books on Ingram Spark, and I just couldn't work out how to format the cover. Oh, it was really yes. difficult. I, I managed to do it in the end, but don't ask me to do it again because I, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't know how to do it. And I'm thinking, no, right, no. next time I might even get someone to do it for me because I can't be, I just can't be spending all that time trying to figure out how to make the cover. <laughs> so yeah. it was book for hardback. Are, yeah. Um, book formatting is, is definitely yeah. something that you can get done on, on, yeah. um, different freelance platforms or, or just freelancers in general. Like they don't have to be like, you're saying your daughter, uh, she's a freelancer, even though yeah. she might not be on Upwork or Fiverr or, you know, legit or any of those other places. Um, you know, you don't, they don't have to be on those. Those are just, you know, easy marketplaces where you can find um, and you can do searches for it and, and see a wide array of, of options. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's, like you said, so many different possibilities um, and you, you know, yeah, book formatting. I've, I've definitely hired people for that as well. Is that mm -hmm. something I can do? Absolutely. I have videos on my channel to show how to do it, but I just don't have the time sometimes, Yeah. you know, and it's something that um, it, when you hire somebody, you know, I said earlier, there's sometimes I'll hire somebody um, as a one-off. And then other times there are people that I reach out to all the time. Anytime I need a book cover design, I go to the same person. Um, yeah. And if she's not available, then I've got, you know, two or three backups. But, you know, when I do my, in, you know, my interior formatting, I'd rather just pay somebody and they're, they're formatting the, you know, the, the print copy and the ebook copy. And I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry about, you know, oh, when I upload the ebook format is, is, you know, especially for like a children's book, are the words going to be on the right page or are they going to, because they didn't get embedded properly, they're on a different page, you know, things like that, that can be yeah. just a pain to have to deal with. I don't have to deal with that. You know, I, yeah. I just, you know, I pay them. And, and I know we talked uh, a couple of <clears throat> times about, you know, you're giving up control, you know, mm -hmm. and, and you are in a sense, but you're still the client. So you're still the one to say, okay, this is what I'm looking for. Um, and, you know, this is exactly what I need. And one thing I always suggest when you deal with a, a freelancer, especially if it's one of, you know, on one of the platforms like Fiverr or Upwork, uh, always reach out to them. There's usually a contact me yeah. button <clears throat> where you can basically send them a, a message within the platform uh, before you book anything. And I always suggest that you do that. Um, that way you can talk one on one and really tell them exactly what you're looking for. You know, on, on places like Upwork and places like Fiverr, you know, they're going to have already preset gigs is what they call them on Fiverr. Um, and so, you know, and this is what it's going to cost. But a lot of times what you're looking for doesn't quite fall into one of those. Reach out to those people. Yeah. And even if what you are looking for does fall into one of those, 
still reach out to them, you know, because you can, you can talk to them about the details of your project. You can talk to them about the timeline that you're looking for. <clears throat> and they might say, okay, this falls under this basic package, you know, go order that. Or what happens for me quite frequently is I end up getting a custom bid. So they'll just send me a custom gig and say, this is how much I'm going to, you know, this is how much it's going to be. Um, because it doesn't quite fit exactly what, you know, the, the cookie cutters that those predefined groups fall into. And I, I, I really feel like you also get a lot of insight when you're, when you're talking to them one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. And yes, it's through messaging back and forth, but you can see what they're, um, you know, especially if you, if you're going to hire somebody to, to be a ghostwriter, don't you want to know how they're writing? You know, um, and you can yeah. and you can see as you're communicating what the communication skills are. Now, for some projects, the communication skills may not be important. Mm -hmm. You know, but um, either way, you want to make sure that you set all the proper expectations even before you book the gig, because then there make sure you make sure that that the timelines that you're expecting are what they can meet and they know exactly what you're looking for. Yeah. Um, and, and don't get me wrong. I, I've definitely run into some issues uh, with freelancers. Uh, I will say <laughs> that majority of the times I've run into an issue with a freelancer, it has been off a site. It's been, it's not been on one of the sites like Fiverr or Upwork. Those I've had run into less issues than just a, reg a, a regular freelancer. Yeah. Um, and, and I think that uh, there's a lot more legal documentation that they fill out when they to to work on a site like that yeah. and so it kind of weans out those people that are just there to make a buck and, yeah. and you're actually getting the people that are there for the long haul yeah um, but yeah i mean there's so much potential and and yes you give up some uh some control as the fact that you're not the one physically doing it but at the end of the day you still are the one that approves it mm -hmm. and um you know pay attention to the gig and see how many revisions you're allowed um, you know, and, and is that something that's negotiable before you book the gig? Yeah. So these are all suggestions that I have, but I, in general, I would say, I mean, I wouldn't still, I wouldn't still do it if I, if I had a bunch of bad experiences, you know? True. And so, um, yeah, I, I still, like I said, my video editor, I, I literally use him every week and he's, he's on Fiverr and I've been using him for three or four years. Mm -hmm. Um, but they're, they're still what I call my regulars that I use, um, whether it's for illustrations or book covers. Yeah. That I, that I freelance because they're, they're things that I just don't have time to do, or I'm not good at, yeah. or maybe I just don't enjoy doing it. You know, like I don't enjoy <laughs> formatting books, you know, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm good at I it. Found that I'm out. good at it. <laughs> I mean, I'm good at it. I can get it done, but in, you know, the hour or two, it's going to take me to do it. What could I get done that's actually going to, what we say, move the needle. That's actually going to make me money. You know, yeah. um, you know, I can, I can be dealing with a, a coaching student or whatever in that time that I'm just sitting down, head down, formatting a book. Mm. No, I absolutely agree. I think you, you said something there where you said, um, or give it to someone because I don't enjoy that particular yes, task. Absolutely. You know? And that for me is probably one of the reasons why I would outsource something because it, it, formatting that hardcover on Ingram Spark, I don't know what it was about it because I can format books on KDP and I have no problem, but I just couldn't get my head around their template and what yep. they wanted me to do. So that would the have flat, been the flap and yeah. If there wasn't even a flap, <laughs> I don't know what it was that was so difficult about it. They've got a template and it's not like the KDP one anyway, big story, but um, I think that is a good a, a good way for me to dip my toes in the water in the outsourcing water because i would find it really hard to outsource anything but when it's something i don't enjoy that's probably my my point of yeah. entry there yeah and that's a great a, point of entry yeah and you made a, a really good point earlier as well when we were saying about when you find someone on fiverr contact them first anyway right. even if you're if you're already thinking you're going ahead because the reason I would do that is because you can find out how professional they are, you know, exactly. how long does it take them to get back to you if you have a question? So 
just by contacting them before you even give them the job, you can gauge a little bit whether they're going to be a good fit for you or not, because I'm the type of person I like people to sort of reply straight away. And I'm probably, right. I'm not always like that. I don't reply straight away, but I like, I like it when people do. I like it when they're professional and there's just, just a certain fit that that goes well with my business that I'm looking for in other people. Mm -hmm. So I think that was a really good point you made, you know, contact them first and, and ask them questions before you, before you agree. And I think that would put your mind at rest more as well. And I would probably do that, ask them a lot of questions and see, see how they fit, fit in with my business, because at the end of the day, it's our business and right. it has to be right. It has to be good quality, whatever we produce. Yeah. And, and, you know, kind of similar to that is, you know, as, as far as response time um, on most platforms, they'll actually have something in there that shows you what their average response time is, which yeah. is great. Um, it'll also tell you what country they're in, which for some people it matters. Um, but the, the one thing I cannot stress enough when it comes to, to talking to someone is um, you know, and obviously when I say talking, I mean, we're, we're talking about writing, um, but uh, is, you can see how professional they are in their communication. Um, you know, it's there. You're, yeah, you're able to read, a, you know, their gigs and you're able to read their little blurbs that they've got there, but you don't know if those are professionally written. You don't know how long it took them to do that. But when you're literally just chatting with somebody, that's when you're going to get the real them. That's when you're going to get, I, I've worked with people and I'm not going to say which platform it's on, but I've worked with people where it said that they were in the United States, which I, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, depending on what I'm writing, it might, um, especially if I'm having them ghost write it, then, then where they're located, uh, makes a difference. Yeah. Um, but you know, when it comes to spelling and things like that, but, um, this particular person said that they were in the United States and as I'm communicating with them, I can definitely tell that, um, English is not their first language, which again is fine. Um, but you know, the, that's, that's something that is helpful for me to know, depending on what project I need them to do. Yeah. So in this particular case, it didn't matter because the the project that I need them to do wasn't wasn't anything written. I, it might've actually been formatting or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. um, but but yeah, the, again, you, you're, you're not gonna get that and if you don't communicate with them. Yeah. Um, and and again, like you said, making sure that, you know, that, that they're able to communicate in a professional way mm -hmm. uh, because at the end of the day, they are representing your business. You know, whether it's just in the formatting of your book or, you know, if you've got them, you know, writing your social media posts for you. Obviously, you want them to be fluent in whatever language you, you are is your fluent language that you're having them write in, you know, and not just that, but you want to make sure, especially for something like that or or um, writing your your email newsletters. And basically, if there's you if they're supposed to sound like you. You need to communicate with them in yeah. order to make sure that they understand what that means. Um, and and a lot of these platforms do allow, once a gig is booked, they do allow um, video chats or things like that through their system. Um, and again, that way you can you can get even more of a of a relationship, especially if it's somebody that you plan on using long term. Um, yeah. So there, there's so many different there different is. options. Yeah, and. I mean, I know of Fiverr and I know of Upwork and I used Fiverr in the past, mm -hmm. um, a long time ago when I had my jewelry business, I used someone on Fiverr to take a picture of one of my items in front of the Hollywood sign, because obviously I couldn't go to, the, to America and right. take that picture. So I outsourced that. And that was the only time I've ever done that. So I went to Fiverr on that. Um, what would you say are the, I, I guess Fiverr and Up Upwork are the, the two big ones. Right. Can you think of any other ones? And how would you say, do are they different? You've used both, um, I think. I actually just today heard of one called Legit, um, L-E-G-I-T. Right. -E um, and and what I was told is that Legit is legit. And I, I don't know if they just said <laughs> that because as, as an excuse to, to make that joke. Um, I would say it really depends on, it, it's kind of hard to say. It, Upwork, from my experience, um, is typically more, 
if you're looking for somebody long term, if you're looking for someone to work hourly, mm -hmm. um, that's really good. Although, uh, as of uh, probably a week ago, Fiverr just released uh, the the option to some of their Fiverr pros actually now offer hourly wages, so or uh, hourly rates, and so um, even that aspect that used to be a big you know differentiator between the two platforms for me um, is kind of gone now. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, I, like I said, I've been a you know, in, in years past, I was a freelancer on Upwork. Um, so I, I can't speak from a freelancer standpoint on Fiverr, but um, as far as a client, um, it really depends. Fiverr tends to be um, a bit less expensive. Um, you know, I mean, they're, they're, it's called Fiverr for a reason. Um, yeah. But that said, don't let that fool you. Um, many of the things are not $5. Uh, you know, the, the basic packages are just that basic. Um, Whereas what I found with Upwork is it's more of a, it's less, you don't really have packages. It's more of a, this is what I do. Mm. You know, I write posts. This is what I could, you know, and again, reach out to them. This is, you know, this is how much I charge an hour. Um, just because they have an hourly rate doesn't mean you have to um, book it as an hourly rate. You can book it as a fixed rate. Um, in both platforms, you can, although this happens more on Upwork, but you can actually create a post on what you need and let and let the freelancers bid on, on your gig. So instead of you spending all the time searching, you can have them come to you. Mm -hmm. um, that That is a lot more frequently used on Upwork uh, than on, on Fiverr, at least in my experience. Um, but one thing I liked about Upwork is they, if you're hiring somebody hourly, they have this, and it, it's been a couple of years since I've used um, Upwork, um, but they have this um, app that you put on your laptop or your computer and it rec and the freelancer puts it on theirs and it records their screen. And so it really helps you verify that the time they're charging you for, they actually spent working on what they're supposed wow. to be working on. Yeah. Um, Fiverr recently, like I said, they just recently added this, this feature to where, you know, they have some uh, of the Fiverr pros that are do doing hourly. They submit their hours uh, weekly and you pay for the previous week. Uh, but I don't know because it's so new. I don't know if, if you're actually getting any kind of visual proof that what they worked on or, or if they're literally just logging their hours. Uh, so I don't know from a, from Fiverr, but I do know on Upwork, at least that's the way it used to be to where you would literally just see a screen share or, um, and you would see, you know, that it would have timestamps on it and you'd see what they were working on. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you can, and, and that's really helpful if they're working on something that maybe, you know, you're hiring them because you don't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's nice to see, oh, this is okay. So this is how you do it. Maybe you're hiring them, you know, on an hourly rate to, uh, to create an Excel, you know, macro. So, you know, you click a button and it runs something for you. Um, you don't know how to program that. Again, you're watching their screen. You're seeing them do it. Uh, so yeah, that, those are the two biggest platforms, Upwork and Fiverr. Um, those are the two biggest differences for me um, has been the, um, it, it just, it seems to be just different type of work Yeah, that's done, um, even though there's definitely overlap. Um, ghostwriting, I usually hire somebody from Upwork for the ghostwriting than I do for fi from Fiverr. Mm -hmm. I honestly can't tell you why. I just do. Um, yeah. uh, uh, the hourly rates tend to be more expensive on Upwork. Um, mm -hmm. Some people look at that as that means it's more quality. I I I don't necessarily know that that's accurate. You know. You know, as, as we've seen with books, price doesn't always mean, ac you know, mean quality. Uh, no. It just means more expensive. So, yeah. but those are, those are usually the the biggest differences is, you know, if you want to hire someone um, for quick, you know, a quick gig or whatever. And, um, you know, I, I personally would suggest just looking at both platforms. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't have a preference, look at both platforms and see what your options are on both. And then re you know, find somebody on Upwork, find somebody on Fiverr, reach out to both of them, 
see how quickly they respond, see what kind of communication skills they have. And, and then you can make a better decision for your business. I was going to say, um, it might be worth, depending on, on what you want to outsource, might be worth looking at both platforms and seeing Yeah, which absolutely. one fits better. I just thought of another one, the Urban Writers. That's Urban another Writers. platform. Yeah. Have you used them before? I I haven't, I, but I have, I'm actually friends with Marco, the, um, yeah. one, one of the, the, the owners. Um, I honestly, I think I've used urban writers once maybe early on, like early on. Um, but, um, but I, I mean, I've heard nothing but positive things. I know they're a bit pricey, um, but it's because of the, the quality that they have. Um, they also have different, uh, different, um, pricing uh, schematics, if you will, you know, like, you, you know, basically a junior writer, or, you know, based on the, the writing skills uh, and, and writing experience of the person, then you can, uh, you know, your, your pricing obviously is going to change. So um, yeah, urban writers is, all, you know, are a great option. Yeah. Yeah, I just thought of them as well cuz and especially for for publishers for for writers and authors Right. that's probably one of the platforms that could be quite interesting for people. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I've, like I said, I've, I've known plenty of people who have used Urban Writers, and I've never heard anything, anything but, but rave reviews. Um, so yeah, that's definitely an option for, for those people that are looking for ghostwriters. Yeah, definitely. Maybe they do book formatting. Maybe I'll use them then as well. Archangel Inc. Um, is another, is another great, uh, freelancer, um, Rob Archangel. I, I, you know, known him for years as well. Uh, and his team does everything from, you know, book formatting, um, book cover design, like, I mean, all kinds of options. Um, but they're, they're, they're not a marketplace. I guess that's the biggest way to, to differentiate places like, like Fiverr and Upwork versus, Um, you know, Urban Writers and uh, Archangel Inc. is um, Archangel Inc. and Urban Writers. They're they're a company that does that. They're not a a marketplace. Whereas Upwork and Fiverr are a marketplace where you know they're just these each person is individual. That's on there are individual freelancers that work for themselves. They're just on this particular platform. Just like if if you're an author. your book is on Amazon, you know, so Amazon is your platform, but you're an individual author. Same thing with those. Whereas Archangel Inc. and, and Urban Writers, their company, those are their writers, you know, their formatters or whatever. So that's kind of a way to differentiate, but they're all freelancers. Yeah. Yeah. So there's plenty of places to look for, for a freelancer if anybody wishes to do that. So I think I might really look into it a little bit more because I've come to the point where I do need to outsource certain things. I need to have more time for other things. And there are things that I'm not that good at that could be better. So I'll definitely... Or that you don't enjoy. And that I don't enjoy it. I think that's probably why I'm not so good at them because Right. <laughs> they're the ones I don't enjoy. So Right. yeah, I don't put the effort Or in that or I should. you don't or you don't enjoy them because you're not good at them. Either way, it's Either way, yeah. I'll have to analyze Yeah. that. Yeah. But um I, I would say that if you're if you're considering using um, a freelancer, the first thing I would do is I would actually reach out to to you know, friends that you might have in, in your industry, Yeah. you know, if you're in a Facebook group or whatever and see if they have anybody that they recommend, Yeah. you know, because obviously, uh, and, and that's one reason why I'm on my YouTube channel. I, I do a lot of videos where I'm working with freelancers. I don't do it um, necessarily. Most of the time, the projects that I get done, I don't even publish um, to be honest. Um, you know, I've got, I think I've gotten like four or five things ghostwritten on there. I do it as a way to, kind of show these people off, show these freelancers off and, and help my viewers to not spend their money to test out these people, you know? And so like, for, for example, illustrators, I might hire five illustrators to do something, but I only end up using one for my project, but in the video, you've now seen what these other four can do. Yeah. So, and, and you've seen how quickly they turn it around, 
you know, what their communication skills are like. So, so I have basically tested it for you so you don't have to. Yeah. And so um, I always recommend when you're using a freelancer, you know, ideally try to find somebody that you can get, you know, that can recommend somebody, yeah. um, you know? So for example, if you're looking for a cover designer on Fiverr, um, Olivia Pro Design, she is amazing. She's the the book cover designer I use. Um, I always recommend her uh, to the point where sometimes she's booked up for me because because of other people <laughs> that I've sent her way. And uh, and that's just you know don't I, tell I, anyone I, then. <laughs> well, that's it. I don't. Yeah, I'm I'm only telling the people on this podcast. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, I you know I I I feel as amazing as she is and how inexpensive as she is. Like I said, twenty twenty five thirty bucks to do you know a, a, a multiple covers. That's good. I mean, you can't go wrong. And yeah. so uh, I, I feel like she deserves to to get, you know, the share her name gets shared around. But um, yeah. but yeah, it's you know, I, I probably should have kept it a secret and and not told <laughs> a lot of people. And, you know, so that way she's always ready. She's always available for me. But it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think I think I will definitely look into it. I mean, I've I've just always been very. Oh, no, I can do this myself. I don't need a ghost writer or I don't need this or that and I think you know and sometimes it it's also the budget if you haven't got the mm -hmm. budget absolutely then, you know you have to do it yourself so you're right. always trading time for money yeah. or money for that's time it. one that's or the it. other that's time time or money whatever you have the most of that's it yeah well, in my case yeah. I think it's time <laughs> not money but yeah. um I think you know that there are certain things especially on Fiverr I find they're really good value. And like you said, I mean, it's not a fiver anymore. It's more, sometimes more than $5, but it's still really good value what they're offering. So I'm I'm going to do a little shopping spree one of these days yeah. and have a look what's on offer. Because, yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's worth worth doing at one point. Yeah. I, and, and like I said, I would definitely say um, make sure that you contact them directly before you hire anybody. Yeah. Um, when, you, when you get the gig, whether it's one that's already – you know, provided like one of their, their cookie cutter ones, or if it's a custom one, look and see how many revisions you're allowed. Um, because that's, that's a big deal. You know I mean? If they say no revisions, then that means you're basically saying it's going to be perfect when they give it to you. So right, yeah. you know, right out of the gate. So the, and, and for, depending on what your request is, it might be, you know, mm -hmm. but again, that's something you want to make sure you keep in mind. But Absolutely. overall, um, like I said, I, I would say if it's anything, uh, you know, just ask yourself if, you know, even if it, even if budget is an issue, ask yourself how much you can afford, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, you know, is, is that money that you're considering spending worth the time it's saving? Um, yeah. If it's not, then just do it yourself. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, m many times, especially early on, it was something I was beating my head at the, on the wall just because I wasn't working right or whatever. And then I'm like, okay, let me just get somebody that can get it done. And how much time it would have saved if I'd done that two, three days earlier. Absolutely. Well, this has been another great mastermind area. Once again, a huge thank you to all our listeners and viewers who came to tag along. If you enjoyed today's mastermind, please consider following or subscribing to the podcast and maybe even leave us a review and let us know what you thought. Until next time, I'm Keith Wheeler. And I'm Nuria Colby. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining the Mastermind today. Be sure to follow the podcast on your platform of choice and tell a friend who would enjoy it too. Your support is greatly appreciated. This has been the Masterminding Success Podcast.